Israel, Amen. of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We're going to get right to this lesson, y'all. I'm going to give you the title. Come as you are. Come as you are with a question mark. Now, you have to be real meticulous when you're dealing with God. And this lie been floating around the churches a lot of years, even before I came, before I got on this earth. You think you, most people think they can approach God any kind of way. Before you approach God, you better make sure you understand who He is and what He's all about first. Because if you approach Him the wrong way, it can be dangerous, and most of all, it can be hurtful for you and your family. So we're going to get right into the lesson to understand what God likes, and what he dislikes. Mm. We're going to turn to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter, excuse me, 22. Matthew chapter 22. We're going to look at a parable here. With this parable, it's almost just like a riddle. You just got to make sure you plug in the pieces to it. Or like a word problem. And we know what x equals, what y equals in here. X equals the law, Y equals uh, Jesus, whichever way you want to put it. Because when you're talking about Jesus of the law, you ain't talking about nothing. Period. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. We'll start Matthew chapter 22 and verse 1. Let's look at this uh, parable. When God called you to the truth, you cannot come as you are. When he calls you the truth, don't show up to him praying to him or faking like you're going to do the right thing and knowing in your heart that you're going to do something different. We're going to start with verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by powers and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Understand, the certain king is Jesus. The marriage is the church. Go ahead. And sent forth his servant to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. That's what Jesus is doing now. When, he, when we preach his word, we call out the people to come to the wedding. It's going to be a wedding, y'all. Believe me, it's going to be a wedding between Jesus and the church, which is his bride. But we got to understand how to come to him at this wedding. That's right. That's the most important part. Go ahead. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Yes, sir. Go ahead. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. You know how we do it. We ask people to come out to the Sabbath day service. We ask people to come to the holy day, holy days and the feast. They got other things to do. And Jesus said, I'm inviting y'all to my marriage. This marriage won't happen one time. That's at that seven trunk. I'm inviting y'all to it, but they made light of it. They don't think you got to do all that. And that's the issue at hand. Most people understand. God is very meticulous. You can't come at him as you are. You cannot. Jump down to verse 8. Then said he to his servant, The wedding is ready. Yes, sir. But they which were bitten were not worthy. He said, They which were bitten were not worthy. He always talking about Israel. Israel first, and then the others of the other nations. That's right. They weren't ready. Why? Because they still fought after Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, Halloween, all that. They still doing all this stuff. Well, go ahead, bro. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, be it to the marriage. Go out there and tell them all about my word so they can come to this Sabbath day service, wherever it would be. Tell them about my holy day. Tell them about my dietary law. Tell them about everything that you can possibly tell them so they won't miss this marriage. Go ahead. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding were furnished 
with guests. So you think about it, when you invite this, inviting people, don't go out there and say, I'm gonna invite my friends. No, you invite them all. Invite them all. Because you cannot judge a book by its cover, man. Don't, don't, be, don't play God. He said, you plant the seed, and I give the increase. Right. I do it. But time to time, ain't nobody here. I know he a sinner. He don't do it. Now you got to realize, this Bible written by some of the biggest sinners in the, in the world at the time. You talking about Paul, he was killing Christians. He called him. Go ahead. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw their man which had not on the wedding garment. Now he said he saw one man now, that didn't have his wedding garment on. Now this wedding garment means something. It ain't literally talking about no dress. He said he saw one man that, or, or whatever it is, or, or his clothing, he talking about something that's dealing with his wedding garment. Go ahead, you're gonna, you're gonna come in. And he said unto him, friend, how came this guy in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. He said, how are you going to approach me as you are without a wedding garment on? How are you going to come and talk to me about forgiveness and sin when you don't handle my law the right way? He was speechless. You cannot approach Jesus no any kind of way, but one way. Knowing him first. Knowing him. But listen what happened to the servant. Go ahead. 13. Then said the king to the servant, Bind him hand and foot, take him away, and cast him in out of darkness. That should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Now this is what he, what he bind him to him. That's the lake of fire. That's right. He threw him in the lake of fire. This man showed up as he was, or coming as he are, playing with God. He said, man, you ain't even got the right kind of witness going on. You don't have the right kind of knowledge to approach me. Period. That's why I tell people, learn about God first before you try to come ask him for something. Because once he do something for you, he expects something in return. Now let's get down to this wedding. What is this wedding? Let's go to Revelation. I'm going to skip 14. I mean, you did for me. Go to Revelation chapter 19 and verse 6. What is this wedding? Revelation 19 and verse 6. And what is this wedding going on? Everything can be interpreted by these scriptures in the Bible. I ain't got to interpret nothing. I can find it and read it to you. Revelation chapter 19, we're going to start at verse 6. Go ahead. Now I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. Yes, sir. For the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Is Jesus talking now? Go ahead. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife has made herself ready. Now understand this, when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are married to the Lord now. You marry him, you're in a covenant. So, put it in layman terms, Jesus, I mean, God is like a jealous husband. He's very jealous. And when you cheat on him, he do exactly like a uh, jealous husband. Y'all seen them ID channels? Who did I marry? And all the people, how they kill their spouse and whoever their spouse is messing with, God act the same way. This is serious, man. You can't come to Him as you are. You got to learn Him first. And once you learn it, now I'm going to come into a covenant with Him and being baptized. And then once I'm baptized, I know how to walk. I'm not saying that you're not going to make no mistakes or I'm saying that you're not going to sin. Understand that everybody gonna sin, but we have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus. That's right. Don't get it twisted now. I'm just telling you, when you make this commitment, be committed without playing. This ain't nothing to play with. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. Verse 8. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. This is this wedding garment, this fine linen. 
It's the righteousness of the saint. What is righteousness? The law. That's how you become righteous. You have to follow his law to put that garment on. But that one man, he didn't have the law. He came up as he was and thought he was just going to get in. No. You have a covenant with God. Hear it. Well, go ahead, bro. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. This is what we must understand once we read it. These are the true sayings. I tell everybody, the worst thing you can do is obtain this truth and then turn away from it. That's the worst thing you can do because you're accountable. You're accountable. And when you're accountable, he do not take care of you messing over his word. Like I said, before I baptize anybody, you're going to you gonna know some of this book first. I ain't going to baptize no kids or anything like that. You're going to know what you need to know first. Then we can go to that wall. Like you ain't gonna put. You ain't gonna have me catch the lake of fire for doing wrong. <laughs> now let's go to Second Peter chapter two. Couple books before Revelation. Second Peter chapter two and verse twenty. Like I said, don't ignore this now, and don't be, don't get in your mind like, oh, I got to walk so straight, I, I can't make no mistakes. God, it's too tough. We are born into sin. I'm not telling you you're not going to sin, but it's a sinful way of doing stuff willingly. That's the thing about it. Willingly. Don't be in that frame of mind being premeditated and thinking that, oh, I can just do this little bit right here and I ask for forgiveness. You're playing with the wrong one. You're playing with the wrong one. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 20. Go ahead, brother. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. You see what he said right here? When you obtain this knowledge, you escape the world. You escape the th stuff that will entangle you in the sin. You know how to get out of it. So he's telling us the worst with them is the, uh, worse with them than the beginning. I mean, you should have stayed where you was for it to come playing with God because you were better off then while you were just sinning. I tell people all the time, don't come up in the Sabbath class trying to make me happy. Because I'm doing this for me first. Me. Me. Nobody else. And then if anybody ever want to gravitate to it, they go ahead. They can come on. Because you got to save yourself first before you try to save anybody else. But don't play with this. Go ahead. This is what God is saying right here. Verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness. He said, for it better for you not to even know this. Don't even sit up and play with this. If you're not going to do this, bye. Don't even, don't even play with this. Go ahead. That after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Wow, go ahead, bro. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her watering in the mouth. See, that's how God look at it. When he gives you the holy things of God, his law, and then you turn back to the Christmas, to the Thanksgiving, to all these crazy pagan holiday, he said, you return about the vomit. Vomit, throw up. You done let this go for something that ain't going to benefit you at all in the resurrection. It's going to pull you in that lake of fire. Take your time with this now. Don't get intimidated by the scriptures. This is, this is a working process to the end. Like I tell people all the time, you ain't saved now. Ain't nobody saved. Zero. We got a message, lesson for that. He said, he that endure to the end shall be saved. Amen. We are working every day. Every day. Every hour. Wake up with it. Go to bed with it. Everything. I know what them Christians, Sunday Christians told y'all, I want to save all they say. 
But they lied to you, just like they lied to me. Now we're going to get some examples of somebody who was playing with the Lord. We can do that. Yes. Let's see over the 2nd Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. We're going to look at these two priests, Hophni and Phineas. Let's look at an example of the man of God. The one that doing what I'm doing right now. Supposed to be leading the people. There's no exception for nobody. Nobody. Especially not the preacher. 2 Samuel chapter 2. 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 12. That's why I tell people, that's why I titled this message, Come as you are, question mark. You better, you better come right. Don't play around with it. stand up here and preach. That don't mean that they're right now. That don't mean that they're right. God told you, do not be a respecter of person. You got to try me just like you try any other preacher by this word, by the word of God. Here. Let's start verse 12. Go ahead, bro. And Elkanah went to Ramah to his house. You're in second, first Samuel chapter 2 and 1. 2 2. Oh yeah, 2 and 12? Verse 12. Yeah, verse 12. Okay. I started with that. Okay. Now the sons of Eli were sons of Belial. Uh-huh. They knew not the Lord. These, these, they did, these sons didn't know the Lord. Go ahead. And the priest customs with the people was that when any man offered sacrifice, the priest servant came while the flesh was in seeking, with a flesh hook of three teeth in his hand. Understand, when, when, when Israel, when the priest was inside the temple, there's a certain way that you had to do the meat off. a certain procedure God wants you to handle, but these priests went about doing it the way they wanted to do it. They were just taking whatever they want to take. And God didn't tell them to do it that way. And he's seen that. Something as small as a meat offering, he's seen that. It's going to go into detail in that. Go ahead, bro. And he struck it unto the pan, a kettle, a uh -huh. cauldron, a pot. All that the flesh hook brought up, the priest took for himself. Go ahead. So they did in Shiloh unto all the Israelites that came there. Go ahead. Also, before they burnt the fat, the priest servant came and said to the man that sacrificed, give flesh to roast. Uh -huh. For the priest, for he will not have the he, he will not have sodden, fresh of thee, but raw. Go ahead. And if any man said unto him, Let them not fail to burn the fat presently, uh -huh. and then take as much as thy soul desire, then he will answer him, Nay, but thou shalt give it me now. And if not, I will take it by force. See what these priests are doing now? A certain amount of meat they're supposed to take, but they want more. It's just like these preachers when they take up tithes and offer the money, they go back and count their bread up. Say, hey man, we shop. So they play back right around, man. He said, hold on, man, the people already gave what they would give. No, sitting around, I gotta pay rent. I gotta pay my rent at home. I gotta do all this stuff for me. And this is what he's doing. He said, no, they're taking it by force. You're going to die if you don't pay your tithes and offer. God going to kill you. They got all this stuff going on. That, like I said, that dollar man in Atlanta. He's good at this. I'm about to say to him, I might get sued right here. Go ahead, bro. 17. Wherefore, the sin of the young man was very great before the Lord. For men abhor the offering of the Lord. 
So you can tell them what they was doing by taking this we offering by four, the sin was very great among the Lord. He abhorred me. He couldn't stand this. He going to deal with them. Turn down to verse 22. Now Eli was very old and heard all that his sons did unto all Israel and how they lay with the woman that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Understand this, they were just taking, uh, they meet off by four, they were sleeping around with the women too. These priests now, these preachers, the same stuff they're doing today, sleeping around with all these women inside the congregation. I, I know y'all heard about this preacher out of, I forgot where he's from, who had HIV, sleeping with all the women in the congregation. Mm -hmm. This stuff ain't just started, it been started. And but like, like I'm trying to tell people, I said, look, the man of God, God is watching you closest, the closest, because you're handling this book. That's why you, my position for an example. Go ahead, brother. 23. And he said unto them, why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealing by all this people. Yes, sir, go ahead. Nay, my son, for it is no good report that I hear. Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. So you're making the Lord's people transgress. We are examples. If you're not giving the true word of God to the people and they follow you and you're doing it wrong, God's going to deal with you, preacher. He's going to deal with the one that preaches. Go ahead, bro. If one man sin against another, the judge shall judge him. Yes, sir. But if a man sin against the Lord, who shall entreat for him? Notwithstanding, yes, they hearken not unto the voice of their father, because the Lord will slay them. He said the Lord won't kill them. Because they listened to the voice of their father, it was instructed to handle these temple uh, statues the right way. Eli told them. But what they did, they went about doing it the way they wanted to do it. You can't do it the way you want to do it. I don't care if you can make more money doing it this way. Whatever the Lord tells you to do according to the law, follow it one by one. Now let's go find out what happens to these brothers, these priests. Let's go to uh, chapter 4. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 3. Harp and Phineas, those were bad boys. Boy, they were sleeping around with these women, taking what they want to take. They didn't care. They didn't care at all. So you talking about the man of God, he can't even come as he as he ought. You gotta come right. Verse 4, go ahead. Verse 3. Yeah, three, excuse me. And when the people were coming to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has the Lord smitten us today before? The Philistine. Uh -huh. Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us. Go ahead. That when it cometh among us, it may save us out of the hand of the enemy. Understand, Israel was going to go through a great battle with the Philistines. And when once Israel had the ark of the covenant with them, God gave them power. He protected them. He guided them. He leading them. And they win. But when the priests start messing up, God won't with them. He won't with them at all. But go ahead, bro. Verse 4. So the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli, Hophni, uh -huh. and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. So the Hophni and Phinehas showed up with the, with the ark of the covenant, thinking that the, that power would work with them. But it didn't work with them because they was. They were sinning in the house of the Lord. And the God seen all this. Jump down to verse 10. Go ahead. And the Philistines fought, and Israel was smitten. And they fled every man into his tent. And there was a very great slaughter. For there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. So 30,000 men died because of the priests. Or what they were doing. There wasn't no protection there. That's what else is going on today in Israel. That's why we've been killed in the streets. That's why we've been hurt up. Because our men, which is our people, which are the Israelites, the so-called Negroes in America and all over the world, they ain't leading us the right way. 
Every time something pop off, they want to march. Marching ain't gonna get you nothing. You need to sit them kids in these pews and teach them the law. If you teach them the law, they'll know how to step. If you teach them what God wants, they'll know not to offend him. But what they do? Let's get together so we can march, have basketball game, cookouts, and stuff like that, so we can just sit around and eat and have fun. Then once they get through with all that, they ain't like nothing. You sit them out there with a loaded gun, and they're pointing toward them, and they got their hand on the trigger. That's all these people doing. They ain't trying to teach you and me nothing. Jump down to verse 16. Go ahead. 16. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the Read 11. Read 11. Excuse me. Verse 11. Then 16. Okay. And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hobni and Phoenix, were slain. They killed him. Once they took the ark of God, they killed him. Now jump down to 16. Go ahead. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is that they have done, my son? See, so this messenger came out of Eli, which is their dad, and told them what happened to their son. He's like, What happened to my son? Go ahead. And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines. Yes, sir. And there has been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons also, Hawkeye and Phoenix, are dead, mm. and the ark of God is taken. See, that, that was too much for Eli to, uh, to take in at that time. Watch what happened. Go ahead. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God that he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate, and his neck broke, and he died. For he was an old man and heavy. And he had judged Israel 40 years. 40 years. Once he heard about his sons, he like know what his sons were doing. And so having that thing just slip back, he died too. See, this stuff just don't start with just me and you. It can also trickle down to our kids too. And that's what's going on today. You see these generational curses going on and on and on because you need to take time to teach your kids these laws and statutes. Everybody growing up on welfare, everybody out there tricking, hoeing, selling drugs, doing all this stuff. Why? Because the parents has failed them. And that's what happened to these sons. Eli told them, but he didn't follow up on them. And you know, that's what happened then. He died too. Let's go to Joshua chapter 24 and verse 19. Joshua, a few books back. Actually, two books back from uh, 1 Samuel. Joshua 24 and 19. We have to be careful, y'all, how we deal with this God. Joshua chapter 24 and 19. We have to be real careful. And the reason why most people don't deal with God with fear, because the preacher took it off the table. That's right. God loves everybody. You don't be all right. Pat him on the back. Don't worry about that, brother. We born in sin. You know, when Jesus died, he did all the work for us. The only thing we got to do is confess with our mouth of Jesus, Lord, we saved. You lie. That's a lie. You got to do more than that. You got to work. You got to work to keep this. It's a job. When you forget God, he forgets you too now. Look at that. Joshua chapter 24, verse 19. Go ahead, brother. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgression, nor your sin. Go ahead. If ye forsake the Lord. He you listen to what he said here. He said, if now. If you forsake the Lord. Go ahead. And serve strange gods. Then he will turn and do your hurt and consume you. After that, he has done you good. He said, he has done you good. You know how you come, you try to do stuff right, and you learn what you're supposed to do, the next thing you know, you turn your back on. He said, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to do this. This is the part that they don't tell you each other when they got to jumping up, falling out loud, catching the Holy Ghost. This stuff right here, he said, I'm going 
I'm going to hurt you because you forgot me. I'm going to forget you. Period. And folks said, man, you're just preaching that too hard. I'm telling you, Israel, or the so-called Negroes in America, you can't bring it no other way. Because people in this worldwide web ain't nothing shocking no more. Man, you come and talking to these kids all, it's going to be all right, little man, all this stuff. Now they don't look at you trying to see how you're going to pick your pocket. You got to put some fear in him. And most